Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. How are you? Oh, come on. Let's hear it. How are you? Good. Good, good, good. Um, what a thrill to be here with Coach. And I have to admit, this is the first time I've had the opportunity to meet him. And uh, his, his uh, reputation came highly from everyone. What a great person he is. And I got to tell you, in this short time, I agree. So great, great to have you on board. I want to start, like, I'm always curious. I think March 23rd, is that right? The date that you were, it was announced that you were the new coach. Did I get that date right? Pat, you said you weren't going to ask me any hard-hitting questions. Here, here, and I, right here, right off the bat, you asked me what date I got hired. That, that might be the toughest that might, question that, might be the hardest. that I have to answer today. Uh, I think it was March 23rd. It's, but, it's been nonstop since then. But whatever day it was, if it was March 23rd, it's one of the best days of my life. All right. All right. So I'm curious, right? The, tell us what, what you can tell us about the lead up to that. What happened? When did someone approach you? How, like the behind the scenes and then the announcement. There, this is, uh, I guess, in the world of college basketball, um, there aren't very many secrets anymore. So news gets out. People talk, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a basketball coach, so I am locked in and totally focused on what's happening with our team. Uh, but I'm also, I'm a college basketball coach. You got to know what's going on. You know, so I knew that this job was open. Um, you know, I thought maybe it could be a possibility. I got a lot of questions about it. And I don't know, probably the, the, the fan base that kind of teased me the most, I think, when we were playing at Rutgers last year and guys yelling my name a couple seats behind me. He's like, Coach Roosevelt, Coach Roosevelt. I'm like, turn around and look at him. And he looks at me right in the eye and goes, Go Irish. <laughs> so, so they were kind of baiting you on. They were trying to. So, yes. so, so you got the phone call. What, did that, what was that like? Just the, the opportunity to, to meet with Jack, um, to talk to him about Notre Dame, right? I, I'm, I'm an Indiana kid, and I've, I've grown up coming to events here, going to I've, – I've been to basketball games here. I've been to football games. Um, I, I worked at IU South Bend down the street, you know, so, so I've been around the community, uh, but just – kind of the opportunity to be a part of this, to really be a part of this, to be a part of this Irish family was something that you can't pass up, something that you can't turn down. Uh, so, you know, my wife and I, we were on board, and then it was about talking to kids, uh, getting them on board as well. So tell us about your wife and your four children. My wife is is um, she's a saint. She's, she has been with me. We went to junior and senior prom together at Cathedral High School, Indianapolis, Indiana. If there's any Indianapolis people here or former Yay. cathedral grads. Um, and then, you know, the, in a, a typical coach's wife, I've, you know, kind of put her through a lot of bad times because I've moved a lot. <laughs> I've changed jobs as... Things have happened, and you're kind of climbing the coaching ladder. And as a coach, right, it, it seems nobody thinks about this. Like, this was great. March 23rd or whatever it was, I took the job, and I packed up a bag, and I left. It's like, see you, honey. See you guys in about three months when you move. And it's like school is still going on. Right? Our four kids are still going to school. They're still doing activities. Like, we have a house we're trying to sell. We have a house we're trying to buy. And I can sit here honestly and say I had nothing to do with any of that. So I might be a pretty good basketball coach. For about three to four months, I was probably a pretty terrible dad and husband. So thank you so much, for Molly, for everything that you did. Molly's right over <laughs> here. Thanks, Molly. How about a round of applause for Molly? <laughs> Okay, so, so you were born in Indy, you played college basketball at Hanover, you coached at Butler, and then just down the street. 
There's nothing like basketball in Indiana, right? Would you agree? What do you think about that? I definitely agree. There's nothing like it. And, you know, that, that's, what, that's what I love about, about Indiana. Um, that's what I love about Notre Dame. Like, we have an unreal basketball history here. Like, the Notre Dame basketball program, people don't talk about it, but our history is right up there with, with a lot of other programs across the country. And now, like, we want to continue to build off that and, and push it as high as we can go while also still doing things the right way, right? We still believe in academics, right? We still believe in growing kids and getting them here and having them be a part of this Notre Dame family and community. So, but I'm a basketball coach, so I love hoops. I love driving down the street in the neighborhood and seeing that there's a basketball going every driveway and seeing kids outside or, or going into the Duncan Center and I'm walking to Chick-fil-A and I can hear the basketball is on the second level up there and people were playing basketball and we went to lunch the other day as a staff and then we walked down to the Rock and took a tour just so we could go up and see the old gym down there and uh, I love every part of it and you can't beat basketball in Indiana. <coughs> but then you left and you've had an incredible coaching career. You, uh, you were Wabash, DePaul, Butler, Purdue, and then the Boston Celtics. Tell us about that. That's a big jump. That's the big leagues. It was probably the best coaching experience that I've had. I got a chance to really learn, and I got a chance to work with the best, but see how the best become the best and how they stay at that level for such a long time. And we had great players. We had great teams. Um, we got a chance to build it over time. We were, we were terrible our first year in Boston. And uh, we didn't win very many games. And the season at game 82, we were all exhausted. And the season ended. And then we got right back to work to, to be better. And then we went to the playoffs five straight years after that. But just the history, the tradition, the stories, like to see – you know, the, the greats of Boston, the, to be at a game and see Bill Russell sitting there on the baseline or um, Bob Cousy comes over to practice and is talking to your players, Tommy Heinz and all the rest. So to be a part of that was, was really special. I, I actually know most of those names because um, I grew up in rural South Dakota and um, we were, my grandmother homesteaded as a single woman when she came from Ireland. So we were fiercely proud of our Irish independence. And so if you're in the middle of nowhere and you get to follow a team, a pro team, and there are none, as you might imagine, in South Dakota, we, we followed the Celtics. And that was, that was kind of our team. And I had the incredible privilege of playing, or of playing, I wish I played, um, of uh, seeing a game in the Old Garden the last year. And I'll never forget it. It's just a, such a storied program. You try and take traditions from every place. And the one thing in Boston and, and when we got there is, you know, people celebrate different things and they put up banners for different things. You know, the Celtics have won 17 NBA championships and in the practice facility there's a blank banner with a spotlight shining on the next one. And it's your goal every single day of, like, this is what it is. But there also is – little bit of pressure of like, hey, this is what we're trying to do. This is what we're trying to accomplish. Um, so I'll get to work on getting a blank ban or let's something. Get, let's go for it. So I, I, think about, I think about your path, right, uh, through all of this. And you were an assistant coach, and now you're a head coach at a, at a, at a, at a, at a big-time program. There's a lot of time in between, right? So what, what have you learned through that time, and how have, has your approach changed as a coach? It's funny, I, I was, so I had this crazy idea when I left college that I wanted to be a head coach by the time I was 30 years old. And I took the job at IE South Bend as a head coach when I was 30. I had no idea what I was doing, <laughs> no clue. I, I was trying to be the coaches that I played for. I was trying to be other coaches that I'd worked for, but I, I wasn't being myself. Um, and it took me those two years to almost fail to a certain point to go back and learn how to do things the right way. 
So I ended up going to Butler, and then I went to Purdue from there, and then I went to Boston from there and back to Purdue. But I developed myself as a coach of how I wanted to do things, of you know who I wanted to be as a coach, the philosophies that I wanted to have, and what I wanted the program to be like. And that time really changed me. It really helped me. Uh, it, it helped me get to this point, and now it's time to put it into action. Well, you, you said failed, but clearly you, you didn't fail. Um, you just got stronger and stronger. And what I find interesting is in all the, I, I didn't live here in 2005, in all the conversations I've heard from people about you, no one said he failed at IUSB. They said, have you met Micah yet? He's incredible. And he knows South Bend and he knows the program. So um, glad, glad you didn't fail. Um, glad, you're, glad you're here. It led me here. Yeah, good. It, it really did. And uh, you have these full circle moments, and this is it, right? This is a full circle moment for me and being back here. And, you know, I'm, I'm just so happy and proud to, to be representing Notre Dame. So you have, uh, you have four children. Your youngest daughter is here today. Tell us about your children. You know, well, obviously one we're going to know a lot about. We have, so four, our, our youngest, Grace, is, is 10. She's a fifth grader, and she's in, enjoying just being the, the, the leader of the house, right? Even though sometimes she eats dinner by herself because nobody will come and join her, but she leads it, right? She, she pushes everything forward, and, and we try and revolve around what she's doing. The other, we have two in high school, uh, a freshman daughter, Caitlin, uh, a sophomore son, Nick, that both go to St. Joe's and that are both involved in activities. And there's a, there's a high school football game over there tonight that Caitlin will be cheering and uh, Nick plays basketball. And then our oldest son, Braden, will be a freshman and on the basketball team here at Notre Dame. So, uh, which has been a challenge so far these first few weeks of coaching him for the first time. So this is, you, ne you didn't ever coach him before this? We've worked together in the driveway or in different, uh, different gyms across the country. Um, but I've never coached him. And I can't always say that those opportunities in the driveway always ended well. That's great. I love that. Well, we'll watch that uh, with, uh, with, with great interest. OK, so let's talk about the upcoming season, right? Uh, we ha had, we've had a lot of the, the student athletes graduate. And now we have a bunch of fresh faces. Who are you watching closely? Who are you excited about? You're excited about all of them because they're your players. They're your team. Can you talk about a few of them? I can. Um, you know, we, this is basketball. College basketball is in the time of transition. And there's so much that's happening, so much that's going on. And our team right now, we have 10 players on scholarship, 11 players on scholarship now. It's one of our walk-ons. We put him on scholarship this summer. Uh, but we're so excited about those guys because it's, it's a new energy for them because they come in every single day and they're learning something new. We have one player on our team that's ever played for me before, uh, a young man named Keba Jai that transferred from Penn State and played for us last year. And then Braden, my son, that he got the chance to watch a lot of our practices. So there's two guys that know what you're doing. And when you're, when you're doing drills for the first time and you tell them to get in the four lines, there's two guys out there that have no idea what you're talking about, right? I, I could be – sometimes it's like I'm speaking Spanish um, during practice. But for us, it, it's making us better coaches every single day because we're teaching. Uh, slowly, we're teaching. And now you can see – the steps that they make on a daily basis, and that's fun for me. So um, we're excited about guys. Matt Zone has been an unbelievable leader for us. You know, there, there's an opportunity there to be a guy that's been here at Notre Dame, and now you have a brand-new coach, and now you have a bunch of new players, and it'd be very easy to take care of yourself first, where he's embraced everybody. He has led our team and embraced Guys that are freshmen, guys that are transfers, guys that have stayed here, and has really brought everybody together 
Um, but you see the joy each and every day that he has doing that. And that's a, you know, that's a testament to him. That's a testament to Notre Dame uh, because that selfless kind of leadership style it has been enforced from somewhere, and uh, now it's showing, and it's helping our team every day. So have you had any surprises since you got here? I've had some surprises in a lot of different ways. Any, any you can tell us about? Wow. Um, let's see. I, I think one of the first days is, uh, you know, one, people have been really helpful, um, very helpful. I, I guess when you think you know everything, right, that's what us college basketball coaches do. We think we know everything. And the freshmen are – and I've, I've been given tours, right, like – we have done so many campus tours with the recruits. Like it, it you know, I, I feel like I can drive campus uh, with my eyes closed. But a few weeks ago in Welcome Weekend, you know, a lot of the staff went ahead to meet one of our freshman players and I stayed back to finish some stuff. And I was like, I'll meet you guys there. And they're like, okay, he's in Duncan Hall. I'm like, yeah, exactly. I know where Duncan Hall is, like, come on. Why would I not know where Duncan Hall is? And I got in a golf cart. I drove across campus. I'm waving at people like, hey, how you doing? Yeah, going to Duncan. How you doing? Then I pull up. I get out. I walk in. And they're like, sir, this is bomber. <laughs> Duncan's way back there. So there are still some surprises. Every day is a surprise, but I'm getting better uh, with each week. That's great. That's great. I'm sure, I'm sure you'll be giving all of us tours soon. Well, I think we're going to open up for Q&A, and so uh, we have microphones out here, and if you want to ask a question, just raise your hand. No we questions. got one right over here. <laughs> just hold that question. Thank you. Coach, welcome to Notre Dame. ACC Big Ten, best basketball conference, and who do you look forward to beating this year in the ACC? ACC is obviously the best basketball conference, right? We'll say that. Um, and who do I look forward to be? Like everybody. Absolutely everybody. Like I have zero allegiances uh, to anybody. So I, you'll find out I am I, – I keep a smile on my face, but um, there's like a burning desire inside to win. So I'm a super competitor. So whenever, whoever we play, whoever we line up against, they don't have to be in the ACC. It could be Niagara to start the year. It can be Maryland Eastern Shore. It could be Hanover. I don't care if they're my alma mater. They can get beat too. Ooh, I like how that sounds. It's going to be a great season. Another question over here. Hey, Kirk Shoes. Welcome to Notre Dame. Thank you. Um, I know I heard you like to play defense. The last coach here really didn't. Stress it. He only played six guys with no defense. He'd rather win a game 99 and 95. But I know you like to play 10 and play defense. Also, my next question is, uh, how is Marcus Burton and J.R. Kinesi working out for you? Yeah, I, I will say, I don't necessarily like to play defense. You don't want to see me out there guarding anybody. It, it, it wouldn't be pretty for any of us. Um, we have, as a team, and we're trying to do it. Like, we're, we are – we want our team to have a defensive DNA. And, you know, if we're not the most talented team, then we're going to try and outwork you. Uh, we're going to fight you. Like, that's, that's the one thing about us and what we're going to try and do. Um, I will say, like, I'm going to play however many guys gets it done. Right? I told our guys the other day, in practice, you guys are getting behind the scenes uh, info right here because how I talk in practice is how I'm talking right now. I told our guys that I'm really big on our discipline and our details and what we're doing. And, you know, if, if you don't get the job done, then, you know, you're going to have to come sit next to me until somebody else can go out there and get the job done. So there was a statement that said, I might only play five of you, so don't hold me to playing a whole bunch of people. 
because I'm just going to play whatever it takes to get the job done. Winning is the most important thing, right? Developing players, developing leaders, developing these guys um, so they can grow after they leave here is really important to me. But doing whatever it takes to win, that's what we're going to do. And uh, that's my main goal. Mar uh, Marcus and JR are awesome. And I I'm, I've enjoyed being around those guys. Um, I told them the other day we weren't loud enough in practice talking defensively. And I was like, hey, Marcus is going to bring 200 people himself in here. So, like, we expect this place to be loud. And when we go on the road, it's going to be loud. So you guys need to talk a little bit louder. But I'm excited about those guys. They're excited about an opportunity. I think they're both going to help us this year. Hey, good afternoon, Coach, and uh, good luck this year. Uh, my quick question is, have you found recruiting at Notre Dame easier or tougher than you thought it would be? I think, it, I think it's been easier, right? Like, um, the one difference is, and, and I've done this in the past, kind of everywhere, right? Like, and, and I talk about this all the time. I'm really big on fits. I don't think everybody fits everywhere. Um, but I'm really particular on who we recruit because of how they fit with our team, how they fit at that university. So it's a dangerous game of chicken where I recruit with a small lens and laser of, like, find who that is, who that fits, and then just go after that guy. Right? Instead of casting a wide net, there's, there's schools, other schools that we recruit against or we talk about and, like, I don't know. I'm just throwing the name out there. Illinois. Illinois offers everybody in the country, right? Well, how do you know who you're really getting? Because you can't spend that time getting to know that kid. You don't know how he's going to fit in your program. That's probably a, a big reason why we have so many transfers um, happening in college basketball, right? Like, because you're not getting to know those kids. You don't know how they fit. You're not going to um, see what they're going to do for your program. So we find the fits. Who's going to fit here at Notre Dame? And then it's been easier because we know they'll fit academically. We know they're going to fit culturally, spiritually, whatever it may be. As basketball players, we know they fit. And then we just got to get them here. And then once they get here, that wins them over every single time, right? A lot of times the parents, it's done. It's like, yeah, dad, hey, dad committed, you know, but dad's like 54 and like had a knee, knee and hip replacement, so we can't play him. We just got to get the kids now, but at least the parents are helping us get the kids. So it's been easier when you find the right fits and then you get them here to campus. And we have some kids that will be coming on these Saturdays um, during football season that they'll get a chance to see this. They'll get a chance to see the, the excitement around campus. They'll get a chance to see the beauty of campus. And uh, hopefully we start turning some of those into more commitments. So before this next question, I want to just play off what you said. How important in this day and age are the parents to the decision of where their child goes to school? Like how much do you focus on parents? I recruit the parents just as hard as I recruit the kids, right? They have to trust. Um, and it helps, right, that I have, a, I have kids the same age. Yeah. Um, you have to be comfortable with not only the school, not only the program, a basketball fit. You have to be comfortable sending your son somewhere and you know they're going to be taken care of. Right? That's where, you know, I, I'm, I'm blessed because I have a staff of guys that work right alongside with me um, that the parents feel really comfortable because they know they're going to take care of them. And, and that, like, we want to be an extension of those parents. Right? You, you're going to send your son to Notre Dame in a, you know, a, a period of his life where he's still growing into a young man. Um, and we have to take the baton from those parents and really push him forward in those years to have him ready. So when they leave, when they say, like, yes, I'm comfortable uh, with that coach, with that coaching staff, with the players that are in the locker room next to them, um, then it's, you know, 
the more people that you have in your corner, the better. That's great. And we want to help you by taking the baton whenever we can to educate those parents that, you know, we often say at Notre Dame, it's not a four-year decision, it's a 40. But now that I've been out 40 years, I'm, I'm going to start changing that narrative. It's a forever decision. But it is. And, and, and the fact that we have, you know, 263 Notre Dame clubs around the world that are uh, ready at any time to help our young men and women, but in this case young men, find an internship, find a job, be in a place where they're welcomed, we're here for you, Coach. And that, that's a big selling point for us. And we talk about that. We talk about you know, just the national brand of this place. And you know, I tell them all the time, you don't, you don't have to come to school here and stay in South Bend or Mishawaka to take advantage of your degree. You can go anywhere. You can go to South Dakota and take yeah. advantage of your degree. That's good. I think we have one right here. Welcome to South Bend, Coach. Glad you're here. I've seen you spend some time with Coach Freeman and Coach Ivy since you've been here. What have you learned from them about being a coach at Notre Dame? I think if there was a word that um, described both would be selfless. Right? Like, I think they both have helped me in different ways um, really acclimate to Notre Dame. And, you know, those two are great because I, I, we're right across the hallway from, from Coach Ivy. So we spend a lot of time together with their staff. Like the energy in our building has been tremendous because I walk in every single day and I walk past their practice court and I see the nine Final Fours, you know, on the wall and it just pushes us every single day to be better. And I think they come over and they see the energy that we're, you know, having them recruiting or whatever it is. And, and we're kind of playing off of each other. Um, Marcus is, is – he's been big time and he's helped us. He's talked to recruits. Like, you know, for, for a guy that's getting ready for a, a season that's upcoming um, with a lot of big games and, and a really good team, like, He's over worried about us and what we're doing as a program and how he can help us. I think that's the biggest thing is, is you have a lot of coaches that you can learn from, uh, that you can take bits and pieces from. And I spent some time with, with Coach Corrigan in the middle of the week this week just you know, talking about his experiences, uh, winning a national championship, and what, what did he say to his team in the first meeting back. Like, how are they approaching practices? So, you know, Coach Ivy, Coach Freeman have been awesome, but we have a, a number of coaches um, that are tremendous in their own right. And I'm still learning. And I've, I've been a head coach for two years at, at this level. So, you know, I'm going to make mistakes. Uh, but I know i got people that I can lean on um, and pick up little bits and pieces here and there. <coughs> So I'm getting the high sign that we're, uh, we're winding down. I, I, I don't know about you, but I could sit up here and listen to Coach talk for a long time. So we'll just make sure we have him back. So ladies and gentlemen, join me in thanking Coach Shrews.